This video was made possible with the generous support of my patrons. If you would like to join them in helping grow this channel, you can do so at the links in the description below. Every day, German pedestrians pay a small tribute to victims of Nazi crimes as they walk by and acknowledge Stolperstein, or stumbling blocks, laid down in their path. These stumbling blocks, although most prevalent in Germany, can be found all across Europe and serve as a way of honoring those who were lost and ensure that their stories are not forgotten. Each stumbling block, or stumbling stone, is located outside a business or residence owned or occupied by an individual who was euthanized, forced to migrate, imprisoned, or exterminated by the Nazis. Many of the stumbling stones commemorate the Jews, Roma, Poles, homosexuals, the physically or mentally disabled, Jehovah's Witnesses, black people, socialists and communists, as well as other resistance fighters that helped undermine the Nazi regime. Most of the stones contain the header, Here Lived, followed by the name and life date of the person known to have resided at that location, as well as the date of their deportation. The Stumbling Stone project began in 1992, 50 years after Heinrich Himmler signed the Auschwitz Decree, ordering the deportation of Sinti and Roma people to the extermination camp. To commemorate this date, the anti-fascist artist Gunther Demnig traced the road to deportation by pulling a self-built rolling pavement printing machine through the city of Cologne to the train station, where the deportees boarded trains to extermination camps. Afterward, he installed the first stumbling stone in front of Cologne's city hall. On its brass plate were engraved the first lines of the Auschwitz Decree, which mandated the deportation of, quote, all gypsy mixed bloods, Roma gypsies, and members of gypsy clans, unquote, to the Auschwitz extermination camp. When Demnick planted the first stumbling block, it was intended to highlight the widely ignored persecution of Roma and Sinti populations from Germany, but gradually expanded into a historical commemoration project to include all victims of Nazi persecution. Demnick decided to commemorate each individual victim with their own stumbling block, because many of the victims of Nazi terror perished in the Holocaust or battlefield and were never given a proper memorial. When Demnick partnered with Michael Friedrich Freelander in 2005 to help manufacture the brass plates for the cobblestones, the project quickly took off. By 2007, the pair had laid 13,000 stumbling stones across 280 cities. In 2009, they laid their 20,000th stone in Hamburg, which featured a ceremony, a gathering of government officials, members of the Jewish community, and descendants of other victims. By 2011, they had laid their 30,000th stone, which extended the project to roughly 700 cities, with many well beyond the borders of Germany. In 2013, the installation of the 40,000th stumbling stone took place in Old Amt, Netherlands, as one of the first in memory of Dutch communists who were executed by the German occupation forces for hiding Jews and Roma. On the 11th of January 2015, the 50,000th stumbling stone was installed in Torino, Italy, for Eleonora Levy. On the 29th of December 2019, the 75,000th stone was installed in Bavaria for Martha and Benno Rosenbaum. Today, in 2023, there are over 100,000 stumbling stones covering 30 countries across Europe, including countries which were never occupied by the Nazis, such as Sweden, Spain, Switzerland, and Ireland. Through its development, the Stumbling Stone project has also come to develop into a reflection of the geographic breadth of the horror inflicted upon the victims. Nazi persecution extended all across Europe, and therefore, the memorial project has come to take on a similar scope. But despite its vast and international breadth, the Stumbling Stone project remains a grassroots initiative. Local groups, often residents of a particular street or school children working on a project, come together to research the biographies of local victims and raise the 120 euros it costs to install each stone. Community groups maintain and clean existing memorials and help research the names and identities of people they wish to commemorate in the future. But while the Stolpersteine project is an inherently collective endeavor, the characteristics of the project bear the unmistakable print of the artist. 
Gunter Demnick never shied away from making political points through his artwork, and is quite familiar with the idea of using an expansive geographic territory as his canvas. As a student, he became politically active and outspoken with his provocative art exhibits that were critical of society, politics, and state violence. In 1968, protesting against the U.S. invasion of Vietnam, he painted a U.S. flag on the window of his art studio in Germany, which replaced the stars with skulls, earning him a brief stint in jail. In 1970, he marched for 21 days in protest of the blind hype in the emerging art industry, specifically around the question of when an artist can truly consider themselves an artist. On his 818-kilometer journey, he applied 1.5 tons of paint to the road with the assistance of a self-made printing wheel, which read Duftmarken Castle, Paris Demning 80, which once again earned him the attention of the authorities. In 1981, he used another self-made device to disperse animal blood along a pathway or a blood trail from Castle to London's Tate Gallery. The year after, he spanned an Ariadne thread over 1,000 kilometers from Castle to Venice. And in 1984, he buried canned landscapes along the path of his trek across the Alps. Demnick's Stumbling Stone project emerged from and carries similar characteristics to these previous works, but the significance of the Stolpersteine project is in how its permanence uniquely grounds and maintains collective memory. Demnick often quotes the Talmud, which says that a person is only forgotten when their name is forgotten. His decision to use many memorials is therefore rooted in the need for each individual victim to be remembered as individuals with names, homes, and lives that were once lived where you are standing. Most of the victims of the Nazis were Jewish, and therefore most of the stumbling blocks commemorate Jews. But the Stumbling Stone Project extends recognition to all persecuted minorities under Nazism, and in fact began by highlighting the persecution of Roma and Sinti. As the years passed, it also came to highlight the extent to which homosexuals, communists, the disabled, criminals, or other quote, anti-social elements were targeted as well. In an interview given before laying two stones outside a house in Cologne, Demnick explains, Here we have a mother who has been stigmatized for being anti-social. The child was placed in a children's home. Both were murdered. On the 23rd of October 2018, a small ceremony gathered to commemorate the installation of a Stolperstein in Frankfurt, Germany. This particular stumbling stone was in memory of a disabled man named Willy Zimmerer, a victim of Nazi euthanasia who was murdered at Hadamar on the 18th of December 1944, at the age of 43. The significance of this particular unveiling was that it marked the introduction of the 70,000th stone commemorating an individual victim of Nazi terror and made the Stolpersteine project the largest memorial in the world, which in 2023 now spans over 700 cities across 30 countries. But even as they grow older and the demand for Stolpersteine continues to grow across Europe, Demnick and Friedrich Freelander refuse to automate the production process. They individually and manually imprint the text, fasten each brass plate to the stone, and install them with their own hands. They see this as an important part of the process of honoring the memory of the victims. The Holocaust was so systematic, what they invented as a means of mass slaughter, it was more or less automated. We don't want anything like that. Memorials are often located in one single location and often feature a large, elaborate, purposefully designed space, layout, and statue. Large, grandiose memorials are intended to pay recognition to a large number of people who lost their lives. Many countries, for example, have a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which is intended to represent or embody the mass of individual identities of soldiers who fell in war. But the Stolpersteine are notably different from these large memorials that commemorate the dead through an anonymous face. The stumbling stones are like gravestones in that they show the names, ages, locations, and dates of death, thus providing an intimate connection to the past. As one resident says, I find it much more moving than these colossal or labyrinthine memorials. The Stolpersteine are so much more vivid and personal. Also unlike large memorials, the stumbling stones are not located in one single location or even country. 
but a vast decentralized territory that mirrors the reach of Nazi terror. Stolpensteiner returned the victims to their neighborhoods, to their homes, with their families, to the places where they belonged. Demnick suggests that this is supposed to provoke people into thinking about what happened to individuals and families during the Nazi era. Families were torn apart, and Stolpersteiner can at least bring them back together symbolically. For example, in front of a house in Amsterdam, a Stolperstein might be placed for a woman who survived Auschwitz, alongside two Stolpersteine for her parents who did not. In this way, the Stolperstein reunites the family. The Stumbling Stone project has grown with widespread popularity and international recognition, but not everyone is convinced. Charlotte Knobloch, Holocaust survivor and head of the Jewish community in Munich and Bavaria, has strongly opposed the project, finding the placement of Stolpersteine underfoot to be unacceptable. Under the Nazi regime, Jewish headstones were widely vandalized and repurposed as bricks to lay roads and sidewalks across Europe, and the idea of treading over the names inscribed on Jewish memorials while walking down the street can be seen as resurrecting a past that some Jews would prefer to move beyond. She says, It is my firm belief that we need to do everything we can in order to make sure that remembrance preserves the dignity of the victims. For me, stumbling over a piece of metal in the ground is anything but dignified. For Michael Friedrich Freelander, the craftsman who fabricates each individual Stolperstein, criticism of the project is unwarranted. I can't think of a better form of remembrance. If you want to read the stone, you must bow before the victim. The artists also point to the growing threat of fascism in the contemporary world and want to use the Stolpersteine as subtle reminders that fascism is still with us. But the strongest validation of the project is in its cultural impact. The growing demand for Stolpersteine is coming at a time when these types of memorials are standing in for living memory no longer with us. The surviving victims of the Nazi regime are passing away from old age and with them, so too are the first-hand accounts of Nazi terror. These stumbling stones are tools of keeping the collective memory of the Holocaust and other fascist crimes alive for future generations who won't have the benefit of hearing about this history from the victims themselves. In Germany, memorials to the victims of the Nazis can be widely found, and in this way, the country has a strong sense of its collective identity in relation to its history. But Germany is somewhat unique in this regard. Most European nations struggle or even refuse to fully acknowledge their role in persecuting Jews during the Nazi era. For example, up until 2015, the Czech Republic had no public memorials, museums, learning centers, or even a plaque commemorating the mass deportation of Jews that occurred in this country 80 years ago. However, even during this period, the streets of Prague were dotted with roughly 300 Stolpersteine which stood as the only trace of the city's memory of this history. Even though they sometimes became quite dirty and were often neglected, these stumbling stones initiated the need for further public commemoration in the Czech Republic. In 2015, the capital city Prague began introducing memorials and other sites of commemoration around its history of Nazi collaboration. There are now two prominent memorials in the capital city, and discussions for a museum or learning center continue to persist. Today, the artists of the Stolpersteine have bittersweet feelings towards their project. The work can be devastating, such as the time they produced 34 stumbling stones to be placed outside a former Jewish orphanage in Hamburg. But they also feel compelled to continue what they see as a moral and political imperative, all the more so in the face of an ascendant far right in Germany and across Europe. Friedrich Freelander says, I feel responsibility. When you know the history and see what's happening today, there's just so many parallels. To their pleasant surprise, the project has slowly become more popular each year and has surpassed the expectations of the artist, with Debnik saying that he expected maybe a few hundred or a thousand stones, but he never dreamed that the project would take off like this. From the outset, Demnick always understood that this project would never be able to pay full commemoration to all the individual victims of Nazi terror. And although the goal is to keep the project going, it will always remain incomplete and therefore theoretical. Each individual Stolperstein is part of the broader totality of the project, which not only commemorates the individuals whose names are on the stones, but commemorates all the victims of the Nazi regime, 
and fights to prevent anything like it from happening again. More determined than ever, even in his 70s, Demnik has no plans to quit. As long as my knees are still okay, I'll keep going. <laughs>